today's video is focused on goals. Why goals? Because my husband asked me a question the other night that really got me thinking. Have I given up on 2020 when there's still more time to play the game? I'm Catherine, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I share inspiration, motivation, and encouragement with new uploads every week. So if you're not already, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below and the little notification bell right next to it so that you won't miss a thing. goals driven person. I like to achieve things. I like to get things done, possibly even an overachiever. I tend to set goals that are so big and scary that I kind of don't even want to attempt to do them. I've since learned to use this SMART method in setting and achieving goals and it's really helped me a lot. And if you've never heard of the SMART method, I'm going to be sharing that with you. So be sure to stick around till the end. Go ahead and comment below if you've ever struggled with getting started on a goal. I'm sure everybody watching this video right now has probably like, uh, yeah, definitely me, that's me. I've been there or I am there currently. No condemnation here, guys. I'm in the same boat. That's why I'm here talking with you today. I've heard so many people say that they're ready for 2020 to be over. And when I hear that, I just think, gosh, that's like living without hope for the future. Maybe this year has been really tough for you as it has been for so many others, but I wanna encourage you, don't quit. Don't give up on this year yet. So when we started this year, we probably had some goals in mind to achieve. Maybe you've run into obstacles along the way trying to achieve those goals and get those things done. Let's just take that one step further. Maybe you haven't even attempted to achieve some of the goals that you set at the beginning of this year. So I know I did. I had a list at the beginning of the year and I tend to go back and look at that list towards the end of the year and think, okay, where have I went with these? You know, if I set out 10 goals, the majority of the time I might have achieved one of those. It's definitely something that most of us struggle with. We get busy and distracted. We forget about them. Like things happen, life gets in the way. It's understandable. Most of us are that way. At the beginning of the year, like I said, I set goals like everybody else, right? And I have done a ton Ton of stuff and achieved a lot of things that I'm really proud of for myself this year. For instance, I've lost 30 pounds, huge success. My initial goal has been met, but I still have a goal to continue to lose weight. And one of my other goals was to see my YouTube channel hit at least a thousand subscribers by the end of 2020. And it just did this past weekend, so I was having a little celebration. Call it a day and celebrate. and just being excited about where I was that day. And the question that my husband asked that challenged me was, what are you hoping to attain by the end of 2020? I hadn't thought past where I was. And when he asked me, it just took me a moment and I said, you know, I really don't, I don't know what I hope to achieve by the end of 2020. I guess I kind of just thought I was done. <laughs> And then I really started thinking a lot more about it and decided I'm not done. It's only October. I just asked Siri, how many more days are there till the end of the year? And at that point, I think there was like 83 more days. And I thought 83 days is a very long time for me to still be able to accomplish something or continue to strive towards goals that I had not accomplished. I didn't necessarily have to set new goals, but there were still some goals that I haven't achieved yet. I didn't want to have to wait until the beginning of January to start working on those goals when I still have time. You know, I could be that much closer to the goals that I have set out before me by the time I actually get to January. Don't give up on this year. There's still more time to see things come to fruition that you were hoping to achieve. So we had a really great conversation about that question and he gave me this great analogy that just got me thinking. Well, he said it's like football when your team isn't doing well and you're in the third quarter heading into the fourth quarter and nobody's playing good. It looks hopeless. It's like the game is lost, right? Like just throw in the towel. It would be like going out on the field in the fourth quarter and just standing there and letting them pummel you and quitting before the game was over. And I just thought, wow, that's a really great way to look at it because I do not wanna quit before the game is over. So here we are entering the end of 2020, the beginning of the fourth quarter of the year. So here's your fourth quarter pep talk. One, it doesn't matter how the first half of your year looks. It doesn't have to affect the rest of it. Let's move on and go ahead and set some new goals and start to set your eyes on hope for a future. Because the word says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I have come to give you hope and a future. And it's a longer verse than that, but that's the part I wanna to talk to you guys about today. You have hope for a future 
future. If you're still breathing, you still have life to live. So keep going. Secondly, I just want to encourage you to be careful with negativity and complaining. It can really cause you just to stay in the same place and not be able to move forward. Instead of looking back to all the things that have happened this year that you're unhappy with or that you haven't achieved, start looking forward to the future with hope. So what are your goals? Do you have goals for your health? Do you have goals for finances? Is it goals for relationships or maybe even spiritual goals? Go ahead and comment below the first one of those that came to mind. So let's talk about what those kind of goals could look like for me specifically. <laughs> and then maybe you guys can relate. I definitely have some health goals like I shared with you guys already. I still am trying to lose some weight. I have about 25 pounds more to go. I definitely don't think 25 pounds is a good goal for me to set to hit by the end of the year it's not very realistic but I do need to set a goal to lose a certain amount of weight by the end of the year so that I can keep going forward and I can keep focusing on that goal and not get deterred when pumpkin rolls start coming out and Thanksgiving dinner gets here and then Christmas goodies all December long I have to have my goal in front of my face so that I can actually achieve weight loss by the end of this year still. I also have some spiritual goals I'm always working towards and that's just spending more time in prayer or journaling more or just taking more time at the end of my day to relax and turn off all of my electronics and just be quiet or either read a book or put on some worship music and enjoy my evening and just soak in God's love and let him reassure me that I'm okay and that tomorrow is going to be a new day and everything's going to be fine and I'm going to achieve all I've set out to achieve because he is going to be partnering with me to do it. Okay guys, so now I want to talk with you about how using the SMART method of setting and achieving goals has helped me. The SMART method is a powerful way of setting and achieving your goals because a goal without a plan is just a wish, you guys. Uh, the S in SMART stands for specific goals. If you don't know where you're going, how are you going to get there? So for example, if I go to an airport and I just walk up to the ticket counter and she asks me, where would you like to go? And I say, I don't really know just any old place will do she's probably gonna look at me like I'm nuts maybe even call security and be like weirdo you probably need to get this one it's not something they probably hear or deal with very often goals are kind of like that you have to know where you're going so set a specific goal so the M in smart stands for measurable so for instance if I am on a weight loss journey so if I want to lose 10 pounds by the end of this year I need to know how many pounds I'm gonna to have to lose every week in order to get there so that's an example of a measurement so definitely make sure that your goal is measurable the A stands for achievable so we only have 80 days when I'm recording this video till the end of the year and by the time you watch this video you may just want to ask Siri how many more days do we have till the end of 2020 and then pick a goal a specific goal that can be measured that's attainable by the end of 2020 don't pick a goal that's gonna be so big that you're like uh, it's gonna take 52 weeks out of the year to do it but I only have three or six or whatever no don't do that make sure that it is achievable the R stands for results based if your goal is not results based then what is it for the point of a goal is to get a specific result so make sure that when you set a goal it has a result an end in mind and the T stands for time based make sure that you put a time stamp on that goal a time stamp says I'm gonna get it done by this specific date and have that written down somewhere put it in your phone and put a reminder every other week for you to look at that goal and see where you're at and see how much time you have have left till you get to the specific date that you set to end that goal. After I thought a little bit about that hard question that challenged me that my husband asked the other night, I finally came up with an answer. I have a book to finish writing, you guys. I definitely do still have weight loss goals and health goals, spiritual goals. I have other goals, but I needed to find a goal that was going to motivate and push me forward to get something done that maybe I've put off for a little too long. And that's my book. Like I've got to get my book finished. I, I have so much of it written. I just procrastinate. I'm not sure why. When I set the goal to finish my book, I didn't just say I want to finish my book. I had to pick a specific part of the process in finishing the book that I wanted to see done by the end of 2020. So I used the SMART method in doing that. So the specific goal that I set was I wanted to have the second edition ready so that it can be edited by the beginning of 2021. And I went ahead and set a measure on that by saying, here's 
how many words a day I need to write or here's how many hours a day I need to spend writing. It's only achievable if I choose a time frame around my life. Like I have kids, I have things to do, I have business to run, I have a lot of stuff going on. So I had to pick a time that was going to work for me in order to get this done. So that means getting up a little earlier than everybody else and sacrificing a little bit of sleep and making sure I do that on a consistent basis. So the results based is that I need to be able to have a manuscript ready to send to an editor by the end of the year, which also ties in my time base. That's my time base. My timestamp is December 31st, 2020. I can be typing out the very last word up till 11:59 PM, but I better be done by midnight. I just hope you guys feel inspired to work towards just one of your goals by the end of 2020. Life is a gift. If you still have breath in your lungs, you you have life to live so live it even if your goal is to just have more peace find ways to do that and be a more peaceful person by the end of the year if you guys found value in this video and felt encouraged motivated and inspired go ahead and give it a thumbs up I would really appreciate it it definitely helps out my channel and also don't forget to subscribe and click that little notification bell and comment down below one of your biggest challenges when it comes to achieving goals and you'll probably encourage someone else as well so no matter what the beginning of 2020 look like I hope that the rest of your year is amazing okay wow it's really dark in my room and, oh my gosh